Express x squared minus 4x plus 7 in the form x plus a squared plus b. This is just completing the square. If we look at x squared minus 4x, to get that, we need x minus 2 squared. x minus 2 squared is x squared minus 4x plus 4. So when we do x minus 2 squared, we need to minus 4 to it to keep the value the same. And therefore, our answer is x minus 2 squared plus 3, where a equals minus 2 and b equals 3. The function f is defined by f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 7 for x is less than k, where k is a constant. State the largest value of k for which f is a decreasing function. Whenever the first part of the question asks you to rewrite an expression or prove an identity, you can guess that the next part or one of the parts in the question will make you use that format of the expression. So instead of looking at x squared minus 4x plus 7, we should try and look at x minus 2 squared plus 3 instead. In the completed square format, it tells us the coordinates of the vertex. In this case, the coefficient of x squared is positive, so we have a curve that opens upwards, and the coordinates of the middle point are at 2, 3. A function is decreasing when the gradient is negative, and from our sketch, we can see that the gradient is negative to the left-hand side of the vertex. This corresponds to x-coordinates of 2 and less. This means that our value of k is equal to 2, and the domain of this function should be x is less than 2. The value of k is now given to be 1. Find an expression for the inverse function of f and state the domain of the inverse. With k equals 1, the domain of function f is now x is less than 1. In order to find the inverse function, we are going to use the completed square format because the first part of the question asks you to complete the square. So to find the inverse function, we need to replace the x with a y and replace the fx with an x and then make y the subject of the formula. After rearranging for y, we get the inverse function equals 2 plus or minus the square root of x minus 3. This means we have two options for the inverse function, but there can only be one. So we need to come up with a way to choose which one it is. Since the domain of f is x less than 1, we can substitute in a random coordinate within the domain for example, x equals 0. If we substitute 0 into the function, it gives us 7. This means that if we substitute 7 into the inverse function, it should give us 0. When we substitute 7 into the first version of the inverse function, which is 2 plus the square root of x minus 3, it gives us 4, which is not equal to 0. Therefore, this version does not work. If we substitute 7 into the other version, which is 2 minus the square root of x minus 3, it gives us 0. Therefore, this is the version of the inverse function for this question, and the inverse function equals 2 minus the square root of x minus 3. To find the domain of the inverse function, Remember, the domain of the inverse function is just the range of the original function. If we sketch out the graph of the original function, we know that it has a vertex at 2, 3, and the domain is x less than 1. So for x values bigger than 1, the graph does not matter. This means that the output or the range of the function f starts with the value corresponding to f1. So the range of fx is fx is bigger than f1. 
1, which is the domain of the inverse function. To get the value of f of 1, we just need to substitute 1 into the original function, and that gives us 4. This means that the domain is x greater than 4. The function g is defined by gx equals 2 divided by x minus 1 for x is greater than 1. Find an expression for gfx and state the range of gf. To find gf, we just need to put the function f inside the function g and then simplify it. To find the range of gf, we can observe the function and think about it. In this case, the function is a fraction, and the top of the function is a constant term. This means that for this fraction, the maximum value is when the denominator is the smallest, and the minimum value is when the denominator is the biggest. If we look at function g, Function g is 2 divided by x minus 1, so the denominator depends on the value of function f, which is x minus 2 to the power of 2 plus 3. But from the previous part of the question, we know that the range of function f is f x is bigger than 4. This means that the function f could take on values from 4 to infinity. To find the maximum value of gf, we want the denominator to be at its minimum, and this happens when the function f is equal to 4 or the minimum value of function f. This means that the function gf will be g4, which corresponds to 2 over 3. This means that the maximum value that gf could be is 2 over 3, and therefore gf is less than 2 over 3. To get the minimum value of function gf, we want the denominator to be at its maximum value. And the denominator is at its maximum value when the function f is equal to infinity. So if we substitute infinity into the function g, this equals 2 over infinity, which equals 0. Therefore, the minimum value the function gf could be is 0, and therefore gf is bigger than 0. If we combine gf is less than 2 over 3 and gf is bigger than 0, we get this inequality, which is the range of gf.